Hello, welcome to online version of Physics 103. Now let's talk about electric potential. So, if you want to talk about electric potential, first you need to know about electric potential energy. Electric potential energy. Let's uh, figure that out, then we'll move to electric potential. We need to know about this guy, then only we can define this guy from there. Okay. So what is electric potential energy? Let us consider a picture like this here. So what do you see here? You have plus charge in the middle and another test charge, which is also plus. Okay. So uh, you, have to, you have to be careful here though, because you have to put this plus inside this green, green circle. The space inside the green circle is, is called uh, electric field actually. What do I mean by electric field? The space around the charge, let's not talk about this charge. Okay, let's not talk about this guy. First talk about this one, this charge, okay? The charge in the middle. So what is the electric field due to uh, this charge on, in the middle? Electric field due to that charge in the middle is the reason or space around it where if you bring another charge, let's call test charge, then there will be interaction. But however, if you, if you put this plus one outside this uh, green circle right here, there is, there is no attraction between these two or no repulsion in this case. Okay, it's like this. If you have two magnets, right? So do, do those magnets attract all the time? They attract only if they are close enough, right? If they are very, very far, they cannot attract or repel. It's like that. So these two charges also can in interact only if this guy is sufficiently close to this guy. Meaning test charge is sufficiently close to source charge. Okay, in other words, these guys will have repulsion in this case, because plus and plus repulsion inside this green circle. Outside the green circle, there is no any interaction. Okay, suppose these two charges are inside, you know, uh, these two charges are, uh, are interacting, right? Okay, these two charges are interacting. Then, then what is the energy of interaction between them? So there should be some kind of uh, energy, right? Between them. They will either, there, there is some kind of energy that they go away or they come closer. In this case, they go away from each other. So what is the energy of interaction? That energy of interaction is called electric potential energy. Now I'm going to talk about uh, uh, work energy theorem. We kind of talked about work energy theorem in mechanics in the previous uh, uh, chapter. So where we had this formula delta K, delta K equals W. Do you remember that? What do I mean by delta K? Delta K is change in kinetic energy is equal to work done. Okay, now we have an, another, uh, one more work energy theorem because this, this work energy theorem connects work to kinetic energy, meaning there is a relationship between work and difference in kinetic energy. But here, the work energy theorem I'm trying to talk about is the relationship between work and potential energy. This guy is potential energy. Okay. So you could simply put delta U here. That's, that's okay too, delta U. Change in potential energy is equal to the negative of work done. So here, change in potential energy, uh, kinetic energy, change in kinetic energy is the work done. Here, change in potential energy is negative of work done. 
So that's the that's the work in the we have two work energy theorem. This is work energy theorem one. This is work energy theorem two. Remember this negative sign here, okay? When you talk about change in potential energy, then you have negative of work done. When you talk about change in potential en kinetic energy, then it's simply the work done. Okay. Now, okay, now we, we know what is electric potential energy, right? Electric potential energy is a energy of interaction between these two charge. Let's say, uh, let's say uh, energy of interaction between these two charges is 10 joule. What is the unit of joule? Sorry, unit of energy, joule, right? Suppose this, this plus, this plus charge, test charge is, let's say, the test charge is, uh, let's say, 2 coulomb. Okay, energy of interaction between these two Coulomb charges and the, the charge in the center. I don't know what is the magnitude of this charge. I don't care for now, okay? So the energy of interaction between these two Coulomb charges and this charge in the center is 10 Joule. Okay, what happens meaning if there is two Coulomb, the energy is 10 Joule. What happens if you replace this guy by one coulomb? How much is the inter energy of interaction? If it is one coulomb, then what is the energy of interaction? Can you help me here? Five joules. Excuse me? Five joules. Exactly. So what did you do here is you divide five, 10 by two. Meaning 10 means that's the, that's the interaction energy, right? So you can simply call U. U divided by Q, Q zero. Because, so this is called Q, the center charge is called Q, and the charge here is called Q zero. In other words, source charge is Q, and test charge is Q zero. So it means my energy of interaction when test charge is replaced by one coulomb, is called electric potential. Did you see the difference between electric potential energy and electric potential? In the case of electric potential energy, you can have any charge. You can have two coulomb charge, three coulomb charge, four coulomb charge, five coulomb charge. But in the case of electric potential, you just have one coulomb there. In other words, electric potential is defined as is u over q zero. That's the definition of definition of electric potential. Electric potential is u over q zero, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, and then electric potential energy is u. Char it's just u. Yeah, electric potential energy is u. This is electric potential energy. See this u? Okay. U is electric potential energy. Oh, okay. And and V, actually we call this V, this electric potential is called V. V equals U over Q0. Q0, exactly. Oh, I got it, okay. Okay, remember yeah. this test charge is Q0 and the center charge is Q. When I say Q0, I'm talking about test charge, this guy here. Oh, okay. Makes sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. Now let's plug in the formula. So we know what electric potential is U over Q0. I can say negative W over Q0. Negative W over Q0 also, right? Can I say that? Because I use the work energy theorem here. This theorem, U is replaced by negative W. Okay. Okay. Actually, this uh, this W. What is this W? W is W infinity. What do I mean by this W infinity? 
W infinity is amount of work done in moving the plus one size from infinity to its location. Meaning, so this is the final location of test size. Look at this. This is the final location of the test size, right? So what I assume here is we have the test size very, very, very far away. Suppose here. It's very, very, very far away. Now, if you bring this test size from this location, which, which we call infinity, to this final location, what is the amount of work done in doing so? Okay, so this is plus one size, right? This is plus one size. We are bringing plus one size from infinity. This is plus one size, we are bringing it from infinity to this particular location. So what is the work done in doing uh, or in bringing this plus one size from infinity to this location, that amount of work done is uh, elective potential. Mathematically, that elective potential is written as that. This is how you write this mathematically. Math this is the mathematical form, and this is how you understand. Physically, this is the amount of work in moving plus one size from infinity to its location. Remember, potential is work. Keep that in mind. Electric potential or simply the potential is the work. What kind of work? That kind of work which is required to move plus one size from infinity, very, very far away, to its location. Now, so how do you define work? F times distance, right? Or we can simply call R, in our case R. Okay, so what force is this, right? Force is this guy here. Now, as you know, electric potential is the work, right? Okay, so what is the work? If the force between these two charges, what is the force between these two charges, Q and Q0? Force between that, those two charges is K times Q, Q0 divided by R squared. This is the Coulomb law, right? Now, if that is the force, then what is the amount of work done to move the charge from infinity to, to the location, to, the, to its location, meaning from infinity to this location? What is the work done? That work done is F times R, right? So then, you, you can derive the re, uh, equation for uh, potential energy, U, from there. Because, uh, you know, if you do some, some uh, calculus here, there is some steps here using calculus. So we get here. Okay, this makes sense because electric potential energy is work done, right? And if the force is this, then what is the work done? Multiply by R. So if you multiply by R, what do you get? This R and R cancel, see that? Then what are you left with? You are left with K, Q, zero over R. That's what it is. Okay. Then if this is U, then what is electric potential then? U over Q, we already know that. Electric potential is U over Q zero. So in other words, B is, so plug in the value of U here. So, u over q0, meaning this q0 and q0 will cancel out, and we are left with v equals kq over r. So guys, you have to remember three formula here. One formula, force, f equals kq0 over r squared. Number two, u equals kq0 over r, electric potential energy, and v equals kq over r. So when you come down from force to the energy, you have, you, are, you lost one R. When you go from here to here, you lost Q0. You see that? These are the three formula. Coulomb force, electric potential energy, and electric potential. Okay, let's do a problem then. 
So the total electric potential, you have to find the total, uh, total electric potential in this, uh, based on this picture here. So look at the picture and find the electric potential at location A and B. So what is the formula for electric potential? This is the formula, right? Remember, this is the formula for electric potential. Keep this in mind, V equals KQ over R. What is K again? You know that, right? 9, 10 to the 9 is same from before. K is 10, 9, 10 to the 9. Then Q and R, we need to, we need to have that to figure out V. So this distance is 0 0.2 and other distance is 0 0.6. I have to take the sign into account and uh, you put the sign here, okay? okay you have to put, take the sign into account then here. Yeah, this is for A. Then if you take the sign into account and uh, this plus and minus becomes minus here. This minus and subtract this guy from that then you get 240. Then how about uh, B here? If you want to find the potential here, B, then what do you do? Potential at point B is again, the same thing again, okay? From here to here, what is the distance here? 0 0.2, 0 0.2, add them together, 0 0.4. That's what we have here. And this is 0 0.4, right? The formula for VB is the same, is just the same thing or um, like for VA? Yeah, it's the same formula. We are using the same formula. Remember what is the formula? V equals, V equals K, Q over, Q over R, right? Mm -hmm. So for the, for the B, let's talk about B here, VB, right? So what is K? Let's talk about this point one and two, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the potential due to one at point B? Instead of A, now we talk about B. So from here to B, so we use the formula this again. K is 9, 10 to the 9 or 8.99. 8 then Q is plus eight, this one here, plus eight. Then divide by, what is the R? R is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.4. Similarly, we use this formula again. K is again nine, 8.99, 10 to the nine. Then Q is, now nah, this is negative eight. So then divide by R. Does it make sense? Then they are exactly the same, right? They are exactly the same. That's why they cancel each other and you get zero. So this zero means this plus one does not move anywhere. That's what it indicates. This zero means, this zero means this plus one size just stays there. It doesn't move anywhere because there is equal attraction and repulsion. That's what it means. Okay. Now we, we talked about uh, electric potential, right? Now let's talk about electric potential difference. So what is the difference? Difference is final minus initial, right? Okay, we'll talk about potential, electric potential difference now. So by definition, difference is this. Difference is BF minus BI, final minus initial, okay? Now let's use the value of BF. B is what? U over Q or Q0, or you, you know, you can call Q0. U over Q0, right? Then what is your BF? BF is UF over Q0. Then what is your, now this BF is done. What is your BI? UI over Q. Now, 
if you take the common denominator, uh, denominator, denominator is common, then what do you have on the numerator on the top? UEF minus UI, that UEF minus UI is delta U. We know delta U is negative W, right? Work energy theorem. Okay, so now electric potential is, electric potential difference is given by this formula, these two formula. Delta V, electric potential difference, that's why we call delta, okay? Delta means difference. Delta V is equal to delta U over Q, that's the one formula. Other formula is minus W over Q. By the way, this Q is Q0, right? So I have written here explicitly here, down here. Delta V equals negative W divided by Q0. So if you have two points A and B, this is where point A, and you have point B here, what is the potential difference between these two points? Okay, given by the negative of work done, work done in bringing one charge, let's say this plus Q0 charge, plus Q0 charge from here to let's say here, where we have a, oops, not here. Uh, from here, to, yeah, from here to here. Okay, so electric potential difference is the amount of work done in bringing plus Q0 charge from B to A. That's what uh, negative WAB is, okay? Then we have to divide by Q0 because we care about just unit charge, right? So that's why you have to divide by Q0. All right, so are you familiar with this relation here, the first one? F equals Q times E. So what is the formula for E? If you go back, then you find the formula for E. Look at that, what is the formula for E? This is my formula for E, right? So what is the formula for uh, F? It looks similar, right? Looks similar to this, but one thing is missing here. What is missing? I'm talking about formula for F. You can change this formula to formula for F. How do you change that? This E becomes F, okay, this E becomes F if I add Q0 here. That's the only difference. So if I add Q0, that's the formula for F. If I remove Q0, that's the formula for E. That's what I meant. So in that case, can I say F equals QE? Can I say F equals QE then? Can I say F equals QE? Because if yes. you just simply add Q0 there, Yes, you can say that. Yep. Very good. Now, now we know this formula, right? We know this formula. Potential difference equals negative W over Q. Okay, so what is work done? Work is what? Work is F times. F times displacement, right? Sometimes you call it S, sometimes you call it X, sometimes you call it R, you know, it's up to you, whatever you call it, right? Work is F times uh, delta S. Now, that's why I replace this work equals F times delta S here. See, negative F times delta S is work. Now I'm going to uh, replace this F. I'm plugging this value here, this value here. What is F again? F is Q0E, do you see that? 
Q0 E is F because this is Q0 E here. Look at that. That's your F. Now, if I do that, this Q0 and Q0 cancel out. Do you see that? So what do you get here? Delta V, which is BB minus BA, which is delta V, equals minus E times delta S. Am I doing right? Correct, is this correct? Yes. If I divide both sides by delta S, what do you get? If I divide both sides by delta S, what do you get? E. You get E, right? That's what I have here, delta S, delta S. So E equals negative delta B over S. That's what the formula. Okay, so from here, what is your E? From this guy, what is your E? E equals, help me here. What is your E from this? F over charge, right? Q, right? Q zero. That's your E. From here, what is your E? V over S. Let's figure out the unit from here. What is the unit of E from if you use this formula? If you use this formula, what is the unit of E? If you use this formula, what is the unit of E? Guys, I, I, I'm lost here. So can you please help me? I need help. What is the unit of F? F is Newton. What is the unit of Q0? Charge. C. That's the unit of E from this formula. If you use this formula, it's the same E. If you use this formula, what is the unit? Delta V, the unit of you know, potential difference is volt, simply V. Then what is the unit of this uh, delta S, distance, meter? So now the E has two different units. One is N over C, the other one is V over M. Which one do you use? Anyone. Because that exact depends on same. the question. Huh? It depends on the question, right? Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. You can use either one. Because they are exactly the same. I can prove that they're exactly the same. If you uh -huh. convert this Newton, you know, use the thing, then I can prove this N by C equals V over M. But as uh -huh. you said, I'll I'll depending on uh, question. I'll choose other one or the other. But even though in the place, let's say you have the question, you have like this, right? If you, in the end, if you write the end, unit like this, you are not doing any wrong there because they're exactly the same. It seems logical that, you know, depending on question, you choose the unit, it seems logical. But what I'm trying to say here is, even though you use this unit, instead of that unit, you're, you're totally fine because they're exactly the same thing. Does it make sense? Yep. Now let's talk about equipotential lines here. Look at this uh, heading here. Oops, equipotential lines. So line is line. What is equal? What is this equal? Equal means uh, equal, right? This telling equal. In short, you say equal. Equal the line which has equal potential everywhere. That line is called equipotential line or curve, equipotential curve, or equipotential surface. Okay, it depends on what you are talking about. It could be line, it could be curve, it could be surface, you know, anything. So if you are talking about surface, right? Then what, what is equipotential surface? The surface in which the potential is same everywhere. So what is potential, what does potential depend on? So let's look at this picture here on the very left. So what do you see here? In the center, this is Q. You see this red plus? 
that red plus is this Q. This Q is that red plus. If I talk about this picture here on the left, that's my Q. And Q, K is constant. Then what do you think your potential depend on? Distance. Distance. So if, if you go on decreasing distance, if you go on decreasing or uh, increasing distance, then what happens to the potential? It decreases. Decreases. Okay, if the R de increases, V decreases. Because my Q is fixed, because I already chose one Q there, right? I already chose the Q. Now I have to choose the distance. So further I go, lesser I get. That's what I'm saying. So right here, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this line here. Do you see this line? I'm talking about this line here. There. This is 70. This line I'm talking about. If you talk about this line, what is the potential for that line? 70 volt. If you talk about this line, what is the potential at that for that line? 50 volt. If you talk about this line, what is the potential for that line? 30 volt. See, it's going decreasing. As you go further away from the charge, the potential goes on decreasing. Now, now I'm I'll turn to equipotential. What is equipotential curve in this case? In this case, see the blue lines here, blue curve. That's what I'm talking about. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I have blue, five blue curves there. A circle, I would say, right? There are five blue circles. Now, what is the potential right here? 30. What is the potential right here? 30. Exactly. What is the potential here? 30. 30. So everywhere on this circle, the potential is 30. Why? Because this circle is same distance away from the center. This circle is same distance away from the circle. As long as this R is same, as long as your R is same, your potential remains same. Because K is constant, and in our case, Q is fixed. We are not going to change the center charge. We are not changing that charge again and again. It's there, it's there. You are not changing Q. You're just changing the R. You are going away from the charge. Meaning for the biggest circle here, your potential is 30 everywhere. Does it make sense? So meaning, this is the equipotential curve. This entire circle, the biggest circle here, that's what I'm talking about. That entire circle is called equipotential, equipotential circle or curve, whatever you call it. Does it make sense? Then what is this guy, this, this, this curve here, this circle? What is the potential right here? Guys, help me. 50 volts. 50. What is potential here? 50, right? So everywhere on this circle, the potential is 50 volt. This is another equipotential surface. So there are all those circles, blue circles, they are equipotential, equipotential circle. They all are equipotential circle. But it does not mean that potential here is equal to here. That's not, that's not what I meant by equipotential, okay? The potential here is different from here. That's not what I meant. What I meant is potential here is same as here, as here, on the same circle. That's why I call it equipotential circle. There are many equipotential circle here, many of them. I have just shown them few. I just talked about when there is only one charge plus Q in the center, right? This is just only one charge. How does the equipotential surface look like if you have two charges then, plus and minus here, plus and minus. When you have two charges like this, then how does the equipotential surface look like? It will be as shown in the picture. It's like, see the blue circles here now? Oh. So if you look at this blue circle, this is the very biggest one here. I'm talking about this guy. 
So this guy, the distance between the this circle and this circle right here is smaller than the distance between this uh, this these two circles here, right here. You see that? Mm -hmm. Unlike here, unlike here. Here the distance is exactly same. Wherever you take it, the distance from inner circle to the outer circle is always same. This distance is always same. But here, since you have two sides, in this case, we had only one size, plus Q. Here we have plus and minus size. That's why equipotential surface is little different now. Not exactly like this. It's little different because the spacing here is little bigger than the spacing on the right side. Same thing here, on the, if you talk about the uh, circle here, the spacing between these two circles is smaller than spacing between these two circles. And interestingly, there is one line in the very middle, which is also equipotential surface. And this is a straight line, as you see here. See, this is also equipotential surface, but what is the potential of this line, this vertical line? It's equipotential, but potential is zero everywhere on this line. On this line, potential is zero, which is very in the middle of these two charges. Assuming these two charges have same magnitude, let's say this is plus three, this is minus three. So if they have different charges, then they won't be, uh, what is it, equi, equi, equal potential? It will be, but this distance might be different. Let's say right now, these, I'm assuming these charges are exactly the same, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why this, this vertical line, this vertical, oh. line, this vertical line is in, you know, right in the middle from here and from here is right in the middle. It's same distance from either way. But if you have, let's say you have plus charge here, plus five charge here, and you have minus five here, minus three here, then this might not be exactly in the middle. Oh. Okay? It will be there, but it might not be exactly in the middle. So similarly, what is the difference between these two cases here, here and here? Here, this is negative, and this is positive, right? You have plus and minus here. But here, what is the difference? Both of them are positive. So look at this. This is plus only. This is minus and plus, and here, plus and plus. If you have plus and plus, how do equipotential surface look like? Again, the Again, the blue blue uh, curve here. See the blue? This is one equipotential. This is another equipotential. So you used to have one straight line in the middle, right, in this case. But here we don't have that line here. That's the one of the difference. And you will get similar equipotential surfaces if you have minus and minus also, minus and minus you'll see exactly the same, similar uh, equipotential surface. Plus, plus, and minus, minus, it will give you exactly similar equipotential surface. And minus, plus gives you like this. Plus only gives you like this. Minus only also gives you like this. So if they're both positive, will they be equidistant, but there won't be, a, there won't be an equipotential line down the middle? Yeah, there won't be, see, there won't be. Okay. It will be, it will look like this rather, see the circle? It will be <laughs> yes, this, uh, not the circle, this. Uh, figure eight? Yeah, figure eight. It will be like that. Okay? Okay. So this, these all blue lines are equipotential line, okay? All the blue lines in all the pictures here, 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 and here, the blue lines are equipotential line. This is for two dimension, right? Then if you talk about three dimension, then you talk about uh, equipotential surface. What do you mean by equipotential surface? Let's say I'm talking about, you see two uh, surface here, right? The inner cup and outer cup. Let me talk about uh, two points on the outer cup. Let me talk about B and A.
So what I'm okay, what I'm seeing here is what is the suppose the potential at B is let's say three, right? And potential at A is three. What is the potential difference between A and B? Zero. Can I say that? Because A and B are on the same equipotential surface, right? This is equipotential surface one, this is equipotential surface two. There are two equipotential surfaces here. The one, the bigger one, and other surface is a smaller surface. They are cup, right? One big cup, the other one is small cup. So since this is equipotential surface, any point you take it on it on the surface, A or B, or even though you can take C. So what is the uh, potential at point A? If it is three, then potential at B is three, potential at C is three also, because this is equipotential surface. Now, in that case, what is the work done if you want to bring the charge from here to here? Remember, when you bring charge from one place to other place, you have to do the work, right? You have to do the work if you want to bring one charge, let's say it's some charge is here. I put some charge here. I don't know, two coulomb charge. I put two coulomb charge here and move it here. Okay? Then how much work do I have to do if you want to move the charge from here to here? From A to B. So what is BB? BB is three. What is BA? BA is three. Then what is the what is W over Q? Zero. What is W then? If your W over Q is zero, what is W? Zero. Zero. So meaning, if you want to move charge from point A to point B on the equipotential surface, you don't have to do work. Have fun like this guy, see? <laughs> you don't have to do work. If it is equipotential surface, okay? Then if, if you want to move the charge from one place to the other, you don't have to do work. Good news. Okay, let me go back to this guy here again. This picture here. So we talked about the blue lines here, right? This is the blue lines. So what is this arrow, this uh, magenta, or what is this color? Can you help me? What is the name of this color? What is the color of this line? Magenta? Can I call magenta or violet? Yeah, violet. Okay. So what is the angle between these two guys here? What is the angle between the line and the surface? Means this, uh, this arrow and this uh, surface. What is the angle between this guy? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. This is always true. No matter what two lines you take, see? This, the, what is the angle between this line and this equipotential surface? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. What is the angle between this guy here and here? Even though it doesn't look like 90, it is 90. What is the angle between equipotential surface and line? 90. 90, always, no matter what you take, it's always 90. That's the property of electric lines of force. Electric lines of force are always perpendicular to equipotential surface, period. That's what I'm trying to show you here, okay? Electric lines of force always perpendicular to equipotential surface or equipotential line, whatever you call it. They are always perpendicular or 90 degree. Okay, this is just the you know same thing but with a bigger nice picture here. Okay, so equipotential surface and the relationship to the electric field. Okay, now now I'm changing my charge configuration. In the previous case, what is the charge here? We just have a charge at one point. You see the charge is right at this point only. 
we put the charge at a point. We put the charge at the point right here in the center. In the center, there is a point. We put minus charge on the right and plus charge on the left. Now, what I'm trying to do here is I put the charge on the surface now, not on the point. See, this guy is all plus charge. This is plate, right? I have a plate like this. I have all plus charges here on this plate. Then, don't worry about these two guys, okay? Don't worry about these two guys. Now I have minus charge on the other plate. Okay? Now my goal is to figure out equipotential surface between the plates. These two plates, what is the equipotential surface between these two plates? If you choose charges on the plate rather than point, like this, plate, plate, and plate. You have two plates, one the plus, the other one minus. Then how do, what does equipotential surface look like? So now these guys, see this dark blue, or whatever you call it, blue. These are the equipotential surface. Okay, equipotential surface looks like this, in between positively charged plate and negatively charged plate, the equipotential surface look like this. Suppose potential here is five volt. It's five volt everywhere on the surface. Five volt, five volt, five volt, five volt everywhere. On this surface, all five volt. You know, either potential here is let's say seven volt, then it's all seven volt, seven volt, seven volt on the surface. Okay, those equipotential surface looks look exactly like the plate here. See, positively charged plate, negatively charged plate, and those surfaces are exactly same shape. So what is the formula for uh, uh, the electric field between these two plates? So between these two plates, what is the formula for electric field? How do you find the electric field? Look, suppose you are supposed to, you are supposed to find electric field, field right here, any point in between. It could be this point also. It could be this point also. Any point in between these two plates. What is the electric field at, at those points? That is given by this formula. Or you can use other formula too, right? You have two formula, right? So you can, for in this case here, I'm going to use this formula. Okay, now let's do this problem then. All right, so example, the electric field and potential are related, obviously, this is how they are related. By the way, this capacitor, the plates like this, two plates plus and minus. So when you have two plates like this, the combination is called capacitor. We'll do that in the next next uh, chapter, okay? The pair of plates like this, plus and minus plate of this kind are called capacitor, okay? The plates of capacitor are separated by distance of this. What is the distance between these two plates? These two plates, the distance is, it means delta S is given. What is delta S? 0 0.032. Let me write this down on the paper, okay? Delta S equals 0 0.032 meter. Then what is BB minus BA? So this is your B, look, this is your B. You this is B here, this is your A. What is the BB minus BA? Negative 64 volt. Between the two equipotential surface shown in color, okay, between these two, that's what I meant. This is, this is what question meant. Between these two surfaces, there is a potential difference as negative. Between these two, what is the what is the delta V? Delta V between these two plates is negative three volt. Negative three volt. Okay. Now what you need to find is Find the spacing between two color surfaces. What is the spacing between these two guys? 
If you want to find the spacing, what do you need to know? The spacing is this guy, right? This is spacing. Delta S is spacing. You need to find the spacing here. Find the spacing. If you want to find spacing, then you need to know delta V and you need to know E. Do you know delta V? Yes, three both. Okay, this is good. We know delta V, good. But you need to know E also. But E is, e is not given, right? That's the problem. How do we find E? When we just use the equation to find E for the outer plates and then plug that in for the two. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's a very, very, very uh, good answer. Now, so the electric field between these two plates is given by this formula also, right? Okay, so let's use that formula first. So let's use that formula. So use that formula and figure out that E. So what is, we have the formula E equals negative delta V over delta S, the negative, then what is delta V? between these two plates, negative 64. Then what is the distance between these two plates? I'm talking about these two plates only, okay? I'm talking about these two plates. I'm doing this calculation for this guy, these two plates, okay? So don't worry about these guys for now, just two plates on the end, so. Then delta V e between the plates, these plates and this plate, the delta V is negative 64, but we have negative sign here. That's why negative, negative 64. Then what is the distance between these two plates? It's given, right? Which is uh, 0 0.0325. Then if you do that, you get electric field. Let's go back to the question now. Now we know the E, right? By using these two guys, we found the E. Now that E can be used here. That's what I meant. I'm using these two plates to find E. That E can be used here. So then I use that E. Delta V is negative three. And E is this guy, exactly this guy here. Let's plug this in here. Then you find negative, negative, positive, which is 1.5 10 to the negative three. So a bare free charge do not uh, remain stationary when close together. Okay, there are two charges there. They are close together, close to each other. That's what it means, okay? They're close to each other. To illustrate this, calculate the uh, acceleration of two isolated protons. Now the protons are there, okay? Protons, two protons are there, P1, P2. They are separated by two millimeter. So, what is the force between them? Proton one and proton two are there. They are, they are separated by two millimeter. What is the force between them? Hmm? The force is K, Q1, Q2 over R square. What is K? Again, nine, 10 to the nine, right? That's, that's the constant and Q1. What is the charge of the proton? Charge of the proton is exactly the same as uh, charge of the electron, which is 10 to the 1.6, 10 to the negative 19 Coulomb. Then you have Q1 and Q2, you have the same thing again. That's why you squared. Then divide by what is R? R is, R is how much? Help me, two, two nanometer, right? Not millimeters, nanometer, sorry. Two nanometer, what is nanometer? Two, 10 to the minus nine. That's how you change it to meter. Then nanometer is squared because you have R is squared here. Two, 10 to the negative nine, the whole thing is squared here. That's your F, this is your F. But what is your F? F is MA, right? MA equals this guy. This whole thing comes in here. Then how do you find A? A equals this guy divided by M. Okay, meaning this guy divided by M here. 
you have to divide by m meaning you have to have the what is the m here mass of the proton right so you will be given the mass of the proton 1.67 10 to the negative 27 gram sorry kilogram okay so if you do that you find the acceleration and the acceleration happens to be so the unit what is the unit you have some number and the unit is meter per second square so calculate the initial acceleration of the proton uh, electric field in an electric field uh, such as uh, created by research bandy graph by research bandy graph Okay, let's find the initial acceleration of the proton. This is my force, right? This is your force. F equals Q0 times E. Okay, just to remind you. So force is QE and also force is MA, right? So they're same, right? So Q0E equals MA. So we are supposed to find the acceleration divided by m. Get the acceleration, which is q0 e divided by m. That's your a. If you plug in the value, then so q0 e q is a proton, right? So this is proton, which is 1.610 to the negative 19. Again, this is constant. It will be given. Then e is electric field, which is. Uh, 510 to the 6 Newton per Coulomb. That is given. Then M, what is M? M is the mass of the proton. This will also be given in the test, okay? You just calculate this, then you get acceleration. The acceleration had the unit meter per second squared. Let's do other problem here. The classic uh, Millikan oil drop experiment was the first to obtain an accurate measurement of the charge on an electron. In it, Oil drops were suspended against the gravitational force by a vertical electric field. So given the oil drop to be one micrometer in radius, one micrometer in radius, radius of the oil drop, and have a density rho equals 920 kilogram per meter cubed, and the weight of the drop, what is mz? mg of the drop so you have to find the weight weight is mg right so you have to find the m once you find m then multiply by g that's easy so how do you find the mass of the oil drop density is mass over volume right so what is mass then mass is rho times b if you multiply both sides by b you get mass equals rho times b so rho is 920 is given here 920 and uh, what is your v so oil drop right oil drop is sphere right oil drop is a sphere tiny sphere so what is the volume of the sphere 4 by 3 4 over 3 pi r is cubed that's the volume of the sphere so 4 over 3 pi is 3.14 what is the radius one micrometer right so which is 10 to the minus 6 meter okay then 10 to the minus 6 cubed this is the volume of the oil drop now so this volume goes in here so 920 multiplied by this number gives you the mass of the mass of the uh, oil drop then how do you find the weight? Multiply mass by gravity, right? Acceleration due to gravity. So then simply multiply by 9.8 gives you the mass of the drop. Sorry, weight of the drop. This is done. Now, the interesting, what it says, the, there is other question, part B, what it says is, find the, uh, okay, if the drop has a single excess electron, so the drop has one extra electron there. One electron is in the drop. Why did I say excess electron? Because 
because uh, there are electron everywhere, right? But uh, when you have electron equal to proton, they neutralize. That's called neutral atom, right? So when you have one more electron, then you have charge there. If you don't have one more electron, then you don't have charge. So total charge of that particular object is due to that excess electron. That's what I meant. Does it make sense? So here, you, have to, you need to find the E. Okay. So the electron is here. So the weight is downward, right? Weight is downward. This is your mg. We already know the mg, right? Mg is something we already figured out. Now, this oil drop is stays stationary right there. It suspends in the air magically. So for that, what should you do? You should charge this guy by plus on plus and this by minus. Then what happens if you charge this by plus, meaning you are you are you are you know uh, connecting that to battery, right? This is minus, this is plus terminal of the battery. Okay, in that case, this guy will be positively charged, this is negatively charged. Then this negative charge will repel this electron and this positive charge will attract. So this electron will try to go up because of those two forces. Okay, attraction by this guy and repulsion by this guy. It's minus and minus repel. That's why it is trying to pull this up, sorry, push this up. And this minus and this plus are, you know, they're attracted. So both the forces are trying to push this guy up. At some point, that's upward force is equal to downward force mg. Okay, so that happens when you put one electron charge on the oil drop. If that is the case, okay, that's given. If that is the case, then we need to find the electric field strength between these two plate. What is the E that you require here? So what is the force due to electric field? Force equals QE. So what is the force due to gravity? Force equals MG. So what, I, what it says is, they have to be balanced to each other. This is upward, right? Okay, this force is upward, this force is downward. That's how they balance. Okay, so meaning, when they balance, QE equals MG, right? You are supposed to find E. So how do you find E? Divide both sides by Q gives you E. So MG over Q. So what is your MG? MG, we already know MG, right? We know the weight of the drop already in the part A. So from part A, put MG here. Then what is Q? Electronic charge, right? It's a electronic charge. What is the Q? 1.610 to the negative 19 Coulomb. So plug this in here, divide mg by this Q, gives you electric field, which is, what is the unit of the electric field? Newton power Coulomb. Some number, Newton power Coulomb, that's what you get. And that happens to be 2.36, 10 to the five Newton power Coulomb. Okay, now this is the last problem. Okay, an evacuated tube uses accelerating voltage of 40 uh, kilovolt to accelerate electrons to heat a copper plate and produce X-rays. What will be the uh, maximum speed of this elect uh, these electrons? So what happens is in the X-ray, so this is what happens. Let me show you what happens in the X-ray, okay? Hold on. So W equals QB, right? W, w, w equals QB, okay. So QB equals one over two MB squared. That's what I meant. So work done by the voltage is QB. Okay, work done by the voltage is QB. And the energy of the electron is 
kinetic energy which is 1 over 2 mv square. So what I'm trying to say here is the electron gains the energy because of the voltage. If I know this, if I have this equation, then how do I find the V? Divide both sides by M, multiply by two, right? Then your, your V max is e square root two Q V over M, right? That's what it is. The thing is, how did I get this QV? That's what I'm using. Work done equals QV, and that work done is converted into kinetic energy. Remember, we have work done kinetic energy theorem. Work done is converted to kinetic energy of the electron. Okay. So QV equals m over two, one over two m v squared. I have this equation. Then plug in the number. Okay, two. Then uh, what is Q? Help me here. What is Q? Q is charge of the electron, right? You see, accelerate the electron. E electron is accelerated. See, accelerate the electron. So that's the Q is the charge of the electron. What is V? V is 40 kilo volt. How do you change it to volt? Kilo volt meaning? So 10 to the three, right? 40, 10 to the three. That's, that is four, 10 to the four. 40, 10 to the three is same as four, 10 to the four. That's your V, V is done. Okay, two times, Q times V times V divided by, then what is this M? M is the mass of the electron. Because electron is moving, right? That's how I say electron, electronic mass, which is 9.11 10 to the negative 31. So this, everything is given to you. So this 1.6, 10 to the 19, negative 19 will be given to you. And 9, 10 to the negative 31 will be given to you, okay? So, but this is already given in the problem. So these two are constant, this and these are constant, will be supplied. And this is given in the question itself. Then you simply plug this in and do the calculation, you get 1.7710 to the eight meter per second. Wow. See the number, this is amazing. So it's almost the velocity of light, you know in the order that fast.